So we are going to simulate how a load balancer works in action in Node.js. So if you ever wonder how a load balancer works in deep, stick with me to find out more. Hello and what's up guys, Medium Guy here and in this video we'll see how to create a load balancer in Node.js proxying the request to the upstream servers that we are going to run in a docker container. So in the previous videos we saw how to create a proxy server in Node.js using a package but in this video we'll see how to create one from scratch without any package. So let's get down to work. So to get started I have created a node project using the command npm init and as my dependencies I am going to need Axios Express and Nodeman and my start script will be nodeman index.js. So the thing that we are going to build is a load balancer which is going to be load balancing between the two upstream servers proxying the request, deciding with a counter variable for which to proxy the request. So going to the code, I'm going to need to import the express package and next I'm going to create an app using the express class. Next I'm gonna import the Axios package by which I'm going to use to make a request to the upstream servers. Next I'll define my upstream servers which I'm going to be running them in the localhost ports 3000 and 3001. Next I'll define some variables by which I'm going to decide which upstream server I'll be proxying the request and next I'll be creating the request handler function which will have a request and a response parameter from which I am going to extract the method URL headers and body data from the first parameter which is the request that is coming from the client and next I'll pass the current index of the servers variable that I declared about the next thing I need to update my current index resetting to the zero if I have reached the maximum value which is the length of the server's array. And now that I know which server to make the request to, I'll just go ahead and create an Axios instance passing the URL, the method, the headers and the data that should be in the request to the upstream server. So if the request has a valid response, I'll just go ahead and console log the proxy to server has been succeeded and I'll just go ahead and send the response.data to the client that is making the request. And if the upstream server is not responding, you just can make another request to the other upstream servers, which in our case, for example, if the localhost port 3000 is down by any reason. We can just make another request for the localhost 3001 which will have exactly the same response. So in order to do that I'll create a catch block and I'll call the handler function passing the request and response as the parameters. So our handler function is complete the next thing I just need to pass the handler function as a middleware to my application. So I'll just go ahead and say app.use passing a function which has a request and response which is going to call the handler function passing the request and response to it. The next thing I'm just gonna listen to the app on a random port which in my case will be 3030. So we have finished our work in here and the next thing I'll just need to have two upstream servers and if you have cloned my repository which I'll put the links down below if you want to follow as I am doing we have set the node proxy app in the previous videos which I'm going to run them in some different ports and load balance with my current application between those instances. 
So switching to my terminal, in one terminal I'm going to cd into the node proxy-docker directory and in the other terminal I'm going to cd into node proxy-docker-2 directory which in both I'm going to run a server. So in the first instance I'll hit ls and I see that I have a docker compose file so the only thing that I need to do is check the port that it is going to expose. So I'll hit nano docker compose and I see that I have mapped the 3000 port to the 3000 port inside the container. So this is correct. The only thing I have to do is say docker compose up. So this is going to create my server and listen on port 3000. And also in the second instance directory, I am going to check the uh, port that is being exposed, which is 3001, and is the exact same port that I need it to be. And again, the only thing that I need to do is say docker compose up. So this will just create my second instance. And now I have the two instances of the node proxy app each running in other ports. So if I go to Chrome and hit localhost 3000, I'll see the response that is being returned from the instance one. And if I go check, I'll see that the request to instance one has been locked to the output. And also if I go ahead and hit the localhost 3001 again if I check my terminal I'll see that the request to the instance 2 has been allowed to the output so I have both my upstream servers running on their own ports and going to the terminal the only thing that I need to do is say npm start which is going to run exactly the same command that I passed in the package.json which is nodeman index.js file. So my load balancer application is up and running. The only thing that I need to do is go to the Chrome and hit the port 3030. And in here I see that the exact same response is coming but I don't know which upstream server this is coming from. So if I go ahead and check the terminal I'll see that the request has been sent to the instance 1 and if I hit refresh I'll see that the request has been sent to the instance 2 and if I hit refresh more and more I'll see exactly that the requests are being load balanced between my two instances. So what happens if one of my upstream servers gets down by any reason? So, for example, I am going to stop my second instance by hitting the Control C button, and again, I'm going to refresh the page with the localhost 3030, which is the port that my load balancer application is running. So, if I hit refresh, I'll see the response is coming without any problem. And if I hit refresh again, and again, without any problem, without any delay, I'll see that the response is exactly coming from the upstream server. So, if I see here, the requests are only being proxied to the server 1. And in my terminal, if I see the output logs, I'll see that the requests to the second instance are being failed. And because in the catch block, I call the handler function again. This is going to rerun the function and because the current index has been changed, it will going to pass the request to the other instances in the next tries. So I hope you get the idea. This is the simplest way that a load balancing application works in any layers. There are more techniques, there are more algorithms and of course there are more to learn 
And if you want me to go deeper, just go ahead and tell me in the comments section if you have any questions. Again, I'll be checking the comments section. And I hope you learned something new in this video. And please do like and subscribe. And thanks for watching. And see you in the next video.